Hello, this is forecaster Dante Brown Royal from the Weatherbound Storm Prediction Center here with your winter 2015-2016 preliminary outlook. Um, we have a lot to get into um, in a very short period of time, so we're going to get right into this, okay guys? Now here's the factors that are in play. This is preliminary. This is what we know for now. The El Nino is currently the strongest that it's been in decades. The El Nino is currently not projected to be as strong or as originally thought, which would have rivaled or been stronger than the one that was in 1997 and 1998. And the east is going to be an east central based El Nino, which that plays a vital role in the forecast as, as well, because uh, east based El Nino and its centri east central are typically colder in the east. Um, and a west based El Nino is pretty much warmer everywhere. Okay? So that's something that we got to really to keep an eye on. Now, the state of the AO is really what the question mark is at this current point in time. The state of the AO, looking at the blocking up north or the polar vortex, if you will, that's what's really um, one of the, another factor that we have to keep in mind as we go through these uh, this, this this pattern, as we because the state of the AO. Uh, there was a wonderful uh, article written about the state of the AO in July of 2009 and how it correlates with this year and how the AO was negative again. So you could, you could see that there's some similarities with that and that resulted in a colder winter 2009 and 2010 that set the tone for it. So well, that's something that we have to keep an eye on. Now, there are this factors still to be determined. The pattern of the AO, the pattern of the AO. So. July was nice to see, but the pattern of the AO is going to be crucial because if, if it was just July and it doesn't transition into the next couple months, then, then that's an issue. So you'll see that in the state of the uh, state of winter or path to winter 2010-2011 series that you see me writing on a consistent basis now. So you're going to see that in those articles. Um, the, the AO, NEO, and PANA, the pattern that we're going to be getting into. The state of the winter pattern that sets up in October and November usually, and that that's how it cor we're going to see if that correlates into the winter, because usually you see some glimpses of what winter will be like in October and in November. Okay, so that's what we're going to really be looking at. So the strong El Nino firming in place. What does it mean on average? It typically means that you'll have warmer than average temperatures pretty much in the northern half of the country, um, due to the fact that. Um, the, the polar jet stream pretty much stays to the north, and you'll see this in the, the next graphic. And about average temperatures somewhere in between here. Temperatures really have an above average, and I'm just going to say this back in the winter of 2009 2010, it wasn't all that cold. Um, specifically, um, when it came to the, when the storm started um, in this area right here. Um, I remember fondly of the February snowstorms and the December snowstorms. Um, that it just wasn't, all, it didn't start off all that cold. It got colder as the storm went along. That's mo that's some storms, snowstorms over here in the east. That's what it does. But there was a lot of heavy wet snow with two of the three uh, major snowstorms that were that came through the area. So. Um, and the, another thing that I will say is that if the pattern continues like it was, you'll see it has been so far this month. The the the, the rain, the heaviest rain cutoff was about here, with the, with these past couple uh, nor'easters or coastal storms, the heaviest rainfall kind of stopped about right there. So that's just keep that in mind. That's kind of like that winter back then. So uh, you look right here. Here's your colder, cooler than average air on, on the normal, with the low pressure system going across the, the, the jet, um, southern jet stream going across the south, as you can see right here. This is a typical pattern uh, in an El Nino year. As I said, this is going to be a central east based pattern. Uh, a central east based El Nino. The polar jet stream stays to the north, which really usually supplies a very frigid cold air. You, I don't think you're going to be seeing much of that this year. Um, and then the cool and wet inside uh, with the Pacific Jet. Really going to be giving you an amplified storm track, so it'll be cool, wet, wet to some, for much of the uh, southern half of the U.S. and cooler in the southeast. Okay? Drier than average in the Midwest. 
um, I mean, during the Great Lakes. So here's the, my temperature outlook. Warmer than average in the west. Um, I'm sticking with that for right now. As you can see, so far this October, late September, we've been having this trough ridge in the east, and it's kind of like a trough in the ridge in the west, and kind of like a trough in the east. I'm sorry, but we're going to keep an eye on that. Equal chances as you go up into the mid-Atlantic mid and northeast. There's certain things I've seen in the last half of September and early October that kind of make me lean another lean another way. But you, I want to see how that pattern's going to continue to develop and you'll have my next update my second update on my forecast coming in uh, November okay my final outlook will be like December 5th literally it will be December 5th so okay so you'll get you get got an idea of when these these updates will come out so cooler than average along the southeast and I will say this the high pressure with the last storm sat up here and it kind of dominated for the most part, uh, it set, kind of sat up there and it kind of forced the, the, the coastal low to, instead of it just coming straight up, it kind of just sat here and provided some heavier rains along the east. And with this past storm, you did get some rain up here, but you, did, you didn't get as much as uh, some of the big cities did. So I'm just going to put it this way. Uh, that pattern it continues you could have more a lot of rain in the eastern half of the nation which leads me to my next point drier than average temperatures drier than average as you head along to the uh, mid Atlantic, midwest and to the and into the areas of into the areas of the west and northwest the four corners region um, but then you see wetter than average along the south so as you can see right here not it's not going to be all that cool over here, but it will be wet. I do believe that. So I think, but wetter than average along the eastern half of the nation and into the southeast. Okay, equal chances as you head off into the um, into areas of Florida. Now things we've noticed so far, looking at starting to look at the pattern now. More storms so far this October and throughout the second half of the year have been coastal storms that resulting in rainfall along the coast. It has been drier than average. Yeah, it has been drier than average, but because some of the storms have just stayed off the coast, um, and most of the precipitation with it, but that's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on to see if that comes farther in. But we've seen some some through September and October that we had had a little few, we've had some more coastal lows than um, we typically see, and that's something that we started noticing back in 2009. So if that pattern continues, as I said, we might be wetter than much wetter than average. It was drier than average. It was drier than average precipitation vegetation wise along long and in the east up until September and early October, and that's similar to what happened in 2002. We had that 2002-2003 winter. It was an El Ni a moderate El Nino year. We had a, a northeast had a one good snowstorm in December it was December 5th of 2002 and then after that it was a lot of slop it was a lot of rain um, through most of the rest of December and then you had January where you had you a lot of areas and along the mid-Atlantic and northeast there was a small surprise storm that dropped about three to five inches of snow from DC to Baltimore and up to Philadelphia and New Jersey so and then then you had two snowstorms um, the President's Day storm, or was it, it was a President's Day storm, snowstorm of 2003. Um, we did have that. So, and then you had uh, a snowstorm briefly after that, and then after that it was just uh, heavy rain. So my my point here is saying is that uh, just it was drier than average then, and then it it became in 2002, and then. September and October came and we just got a lot of rain and it wiped us out of that dry pattern so if that type of thing continues you'll see a lot of precipitation this upcoming year it could that's why I'm mentioning 2002 2003 a lot and 2009 2010 a lot because there's certain things that correlate to that year cooler than average to average temperatures have taken the east while the west the last several weeks to almost a month now it's been above average temperature wise the ridge in the west and the trough has been over the east so we spoke about that a little bit earlier and now we have to keep watching the pattern as we move into and through october and november so here's what our current outlook is 
And this is all we're going to talk about for right now. Winter may be warmer than nation's midsection, warmer than average. I won't say warm, as I said, not 70. I don't think you'd be dealing with widespread 70s or 80s or something like that, or 60s, um, or maybe even 50s. But it would be warmer than it typically would be for winter. Winter will start off warmer than average, and the second half will be colder than average with more opportunities for snow, especially in the east. Wet in the southeast, chance for more nor'easters, and occasional arctic blast, but not as we, much as we have seen in the last couple of years, which I mentioned earlier. The polar vortex will not be coming, I don't think it will be coming down as much this year as it was last year for some of the factors that I mentioned earlier, the type of El Nino that we have. So, mild and dry with occasional impulses of colder air, uh, of some arctic air. Um, so, I, when I say mild, I'm not talking about 60s, as I mentioned earlier, it's just warmer than it typically is for the winter. Wet but not all that cool in the Pacific Southwest. Um, I do think that, that, that that's what will transpire, at least right now. Cool and wet in the Southeast. I think that that, that because as I said, the, the, the pattern with the Pacific Jet and the Southern Jet coming down across the South, that's kind of the pattern that you're going to see the more we sip down here in the South. Um, I think, as I said, the trough in the east and the wet uh, ridge in the east and trough in the west. That that'll keep the temperatures cool, um, cooler, cooler than average at times. Well, winter battle zone, I think, will be to the farther to the northwest of the big cities, um, because I believe that at least early on in the winter, I think that that's where more of your snow will be and where more of the chances for mix will be. And if there are bigger storms, I believe that the heaviest of the snow will end up being. A, right up and along here um, towards uh, the west. So the winter battle zone will be there. I think that you'll see more rain than snow, especially early. It says you might get a snowstorm in December, but then there's, I believe that there might be a lull in between. But we're going to have to see what the weather pattern brings as we head off into November and December. Okay, guys? So this is your winter outlook of 2015-2016. preliminary outlook. There will be another one in early December and another one December. The final one will be December 5th. You're going to see on a weekly basis a Path to Winter series article as you're going to see little snippets of what I'm noticing with the winter and what little fa factor here, factor here, and all of this will kind of be put posted in that winter outlook, all right? So you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope that this was very clear to you. Any comments or questions that you might have, put, post them in the article. Now, here's the one disclaimer. I'm not answering any questions at this point of how much snow your area is going to get, who's going to be above average of snow, who's going to be below average of snow. It's simply too early to tell that right now. And it's really hard to tell that at any point during the winter. So, until after you see the winter pattern set up, all right?